Hello, and welcome to another episode of Chasing Mysteries Gardens. I'm Rebecca, and along with my wife Karen, we are on a mission to renovate and rejuvenate our little piece of earth. Today is August 24th, and we are in the middle of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. So two days ago, I made corn salsa, and I encouraged you to keep your corn cobs. So today we are gonna take these corn cobs, they've been in the refrigerator since then, and we are going to make corn syrup. This is quite a lengthy project, it takes a lot of cooking time. So let's get started on our corn syrup for the Every Bit Counts Challenge. So I have here my water bath canner. This is actually a multi-cooker. You can steam, cook, boil, simmer, blanch, any kind of cooking you can do in this. So we're just going to place our corn cobs in here. So I have 14 corn cobs. And then what we want to do is we want to cover them with water. All right, so if we push these down, you can see that they're all covered in water. Now there's no way that these are going to stay submerged. I'm just going to use, this is the, um, it holds the jars down when you're canning, so I'm just going to use that to kind of hold them under the water. So now we've got this covered, we are going to bring this to a boil and let it boil hard for 30 minutes. Then we're going to turn it down and let it simmer for one hour. So while that is coming to a boil, I thought it would be fun to go through the rest of the boxes of jars and I found some fun stuff. I found this old box of ball wide mouth canning lids and $1.89. I wish they were $1.89 anymore. I think the last box of ball that I bought from just a regular store like Ace Hardware was pretty close to seven dollars so it's definitely gone up and what's funny is that on the side of the box here it says the ball blue book 32nd edition stay up to date on home food preservation with newly revised USDA recipe and processing information three dollars and fifty cents and then just send your money and they'll send you the book. There's even a little picture of it. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. So Ball used to be the Ball Corporation in Muncie, Indiana. And now on a box of new ones, Rubbermaid, Dunwoody, no, Atlanta, Georgia. So that's the difference over the years. I also found some Kerr. These were $2.29. There's no dates on the boxes. Kerr and Kerr Group, also Muncie, Indiana. So these look like, these look like they may have been used the rubber is a different color. It's a, it's a gray. It's a lot thicker. Oh yeah, I won't use these. It just like flakes off, flakes off with, with the fingernail. So I won't even use these to cover, um, at least not that one. Some of these I'll use to just to cover um, jars. Yeah, not this one. You can tell that they're old. So I'm going to assume that all of these are used and that these are new, but they might be too old to use. Um, actually, let me open them.
Oh no, the rubber's still good. There's no rust. The rubber's even. Yeah, these are nice, good to go. So I'll have to mark this box new and this box used. Has anyone ever heard of Knox? Knox Mason. This jar might have a, a chip out of the top, so I couldn't use it anyway. I could use it for storage. Can't tell if that's a chip or just a something in the glass. But if, if anyone's ever heard of Knox, where it comes from, it's more of a square jar on the bottom. Got a whole bunch of these quart size. I don't really can in quarts, but we'll find a use for them. I think I might can some pears in quart jars this year. Ooh, tall jelly jars. These need a good washing. I also found this. I don't know what this size is called. Um, it's two. It says two cups on the side, but then it's above two cups, maybe two and a half cups. But this is the size that you would, if you were going to pickle asparagus or extra long green beans, this would be a great jar for that. I've only found one of those. This box, oh, this is my, this is my friend Dan, and those must be his grandparents. I'll make sure this gets back to them. There are three boxes of sure Joe. September 2020, we'll do some research on that. It's pecked in, so might be okay. We have a little gingerbread. Oh, this is so cute. Pot holder. <laughs> I don't think they knew these things were in these boxes. Oh my goodness. These are all wrapped in paper towels. They even have the lids. These are brand new jars. Wow. This is so exciting. I think they're going to be all the same because they're all wrapped the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So there's a couple of these blue ones that are really pretty. A bunch of tiny ones. You know what? If there's enough of these, this size might actually be perfect. I'm canning tomatoes this weekend with my mom and because we don't eat a lot of tomatoes, I just want some for this one dish that we do make. I think this will be the perfect size instead of a pint because a pint is still too much. But yet a half pint isn't quite enough. So maybe I'll use these. Oh, I also got a lot of these Atlas Easy Seals. I don't even know where to get the tops. I don't know if Tatler rings, the, the rubber rings, if I could use those. These I think I just might use for storage of goods. This is actually the biggest one that I found so far. Quarter pint, quarter pint, quarter pint. Half pint, half pint. These are all Pints plus these 
I think it's a pint and a half, two, four, six, eight of those. Quartz, more half pints. All the boxes back there are pints. These are two boxes of half pints. And these are all pints. Holy cow. Oh, the top. This has been simmering for well over two hours. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna call it done. The nice thing about this pot is that it has a spout. So we're gonna drain it into our cast iron pot here through a coffee filter and a sieve to catch any bits that might come out. Oh no, I forgot to open it inside, hold on. So just took my tongs and pulled open, whoop, pulled open, you can't see me. So I took my tongs and pulled open the little valve here on the inside. Now we can open it. So most of the corn bits are on the bottom of the pot because I use the grate. So I'm just going to take this off. It doesn't seem to be catching any, any of the bits and it's not allowing the liquid to go through very well. That is a lot of corn broth. It's probably an inch from the top. I need room for the brown sugar, so I'm gonna stop it here. There is still a little bit here in the bottom. You can kind of see the corn bits. All right, let's carefully take this inside and get it on the stove. So we're going to turn this on medium high. It's boiling hot, so it shouldn't take too long to come back up. But now is when we add the sugar. So this is homemade brown sugar. I made it this morning. Brown sugar is super easy to make. It's literally Molasses, I used grandma's molasses and just regular table, table sugar. I think I'm gonna measure this out. So I made five cups. I don't know if I'm gonna need five cups. There's no recipe to this that I have. So it's trial and error. I believe you can add as much sugar as you want. So when I mix this, I just use the whisk attachment on my KitchenAid. I can see that some of it here at the bottom didn't get mixed up all the way. All right, so that's about four cups. I'm gonna see how that goes. And then go from there. If we need to add more, we can. So you can see when this, when I first brought it in here, it was a nice yellow color. And now that we've added the brown sugar, it turns into a lovely amber color. So the goal of this is to reduce it down. I'm going to start to reduce it by half. And then when it looks good, I'm going to take its temperature, 
and we want to get it to 220 and that's just about syrup state and then I'm going to water bath can it in half pint jars I tasted it and it's delicious it tastes like syrup we have bubbles starting they're coming from the middle here and this is all swirling around you want to make sure that you stir it every once and again so it doesn't burn on the bottom all the sugars should should be dissolved but you never know we're gonna go outside and clean our electric pot so that we can water bath can this when it's done let's go look at all those corn bits the nice thing about this pot is it cools down really fast so I think I'm just just gonna dump this in the bush and then get the hose and clean it As you can see, this is reduced well beyond half. Half was way up here. And we are at 2.15. Make sure it doesn't touch the bottom. So I've also been kind of testing it on the spoon to see how well it sticks to a spoon that's pretty nice right there it still runs off pretty syrupy you can test the back too see how it coats the back and then one other test that I'm gonna do You can do this with jelly as well. I'm just going to put some on a plate and then put it in the freezer. That's going to cool it way down and show me what it's going to be like when it's cool. But you know what? I'm, I'm thinking this is done. I'm not going to have much left if I don't do it soon. All right, let's get these into jars. Here is out of the freezer. You can see it's still still runny, but holds up nice. This isn't even all the way cold yet, so. All right, oh, it's so good. I'm calling it done. So I wanna make sure these jars are hot. They're all cleaned, ready to go, but I cleaned them a while ago so they've gotten cold again. I just don't want to shock them with the hot syrup. I'm going to start with three. I was hoping for six or eight, but it's cooked down a lot more than I thought it would. And right, I've got my funnel. I want to go to about a quarter inch ahead space so I can get some more in there. Now 
Now, because this is sticky, I'm just going to use some vinegar to wipe the rims. Oh, that is super hot, guys. Lid, ring. One done. one more. This syrup is going to be excellent on pancakes or biscuits. Um, anything you would put syrup on. Waffles. It's got a, I, I added a little bit of vanilla so it has a little bit of vanilla flavor. You could also add maple flavor if you wanted to. Let's push our luck and try for one more. Oh, come on, you could do it, yes. There's just a little bit left in the bottom. Perfect. these outside and into the water bath. It's already gotten so dark you can't see without the overhead light anymore. I think it's 820. It's it dark so fast. All right we're going 15 minutes on these as soon as this comes back to a boil. There you have it. I got six beautiful half pints of syrup. This is going to be delicious in the winter months on my pancakes and waffles. This is just an excellent way to get the most out of your produce. This just came from leftover corn cobs that normally would have gone in the compost or in the garbage. And along with some homemade brown sugar, we were able to make syrup. So if you don't have access to maple trees, this is a great alternative. You could add maple flavor to get the likeness of maple syrup, and it is delicious and sweet. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more and follow us as we continue the Every Bit Counts Challenge. And as always, Suki Suki, love the earth, love yourself, love each other. Till next time. It's nice and runny in there. Mmm.